Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this very special episode of Well Read. I'm your host, Justin Chapman. Today, I'm going to tell you about my reporting on Mad Mike Hughes. Mad Mike was a very eccentric and interesting guy. He was a 64-year-old daredevil limo driver who taught himself rocket science, crowdfunded the money to build his own steam-powered rockets out of spare parts from eBay, Craigslist, and scrapyards, and launched himself a couple thousand feet into the sky three times. He was also a supposed flat earther who didn't believe in science, or gravity for that matter. He held a Guinness World Record for longest limo jump in 2002 hosted a flat earth conference in Vegas in 2019, had a documentary made about him called Rocket Man, had an upcoming science channel show called Homemade Astronauts, and harbored fringe views about the government, court system, science, and society. He ran for governor of California in 2018. Here's his platform, which included bringing back public hangings, eliminating the minimum wage, building Trump's border wall, getting women out of the workplace, and implementing single-income households. On February 22nd, 2020, Mad Mike launched himself thousands of feet into the air for the third and final time in his self-made steam-powered rocket, just off Highway 247 in Barstow, California. Barstow? You asked me why I started there. It's a hellhole. It is. It's a hellhole. His goal was one mile, or 5,280 feet. Less than 40 seconds after launching, the rocket crash landed and he died, as you saw in my video at the beginning of this episode. But we'll get to all that. First, I want to tell you about who Mad Mike was. Why did he do it? Why did he launch himself into the sky? As he told me, his main goal was to inspire people. What's like the, the, your main motivation for doing these launches? Inspire people. We used to believe great things could happen, and we don't believe we can do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And maybe it inspires the guys who can really change the world, mm -hmm. or the group of people. The thing is to inspire people, mm -hmm. because at one time in this country, we thought anything was possible. I first encountered Mad Mike in February 2019, when he spoke at the Adventurers Club of Los Angeles, where I had also given a talk about my travels across Africa. The Adventurers Club is an old school men's club that celebrates adventurers of all kinds at their headquarters in East LA, which is decorated with exotic animal busts and maps and shrunken heads, and taxidermy polar bears, and 10,000-year-old mastodon tusks. The main hall, formerly a Masonic Lodge, was packed on a gentleman's night to hear from the internet-famous rocketeer. He was certainly entertaining, as well as surprisingly funny, with smart, eloquent insights on life. At the same time, he espoused what many would consider batshit, crazy, conspiracy theory beliefs. And he made several sovinistic jokes, stuff like, breaking my back in a rocket crash landing wasn't as painful as my last marriage. He'd been married and divorced twice and said he'd been single since 1991. He also said crass comments such as, maybe that's why my kids haven't talked to me in 30 years. He indeed did have two estranged sons who hadn't spoken to him in years until fairly recently. One of them is training to become an airline pilot. The Adventurers Club crowd loved Mad Mike. This club honors all forms of adventure, no matter what it might be. Uh, we never ask why, we just honor the adventure. And why, while there may be uh, some skeptics about your uh, theories, you're the guy who puts your butt in that seat and straps in, baby. So, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks thank for coming. Thank you. At that point, Mad Mike had already launched himself twice in steam powered rockets he built in 2014 in Winkleman, Arizona and in 2018 in Amboy, California, and he was planning to do it again. He told the crowd at the Adventurers Club that his ultimate goal was to crowdfund $2.8 million to build a raccoon, a rare Cold War era vessel as part rocket, part balloon, to launch himself this October 62.8 miles up to the edge of space, known as the Kármán line, to see what shape this planet is for himself. Many of those who covered Mad Mike's exploits in the media seemed to conflate the steam-powered rocket launch attempts with his eventual goal of reaching the edge of space via a raccoon. Mad Mike never said he was using these steam-powered rockets to get high enough to see the curvature of the Earth. He was doing these rocket launches because he is first and foremost a daredevil. They had nothing to do with his desire to reach the Kármán line, which he stated many times. 
That's the trip during which he hoped to see the curvature, or lack thereof, of the Earth, not the steam-powered rockets. The raccoon would first use a giant helium balloon to carry the vessel and Mike about 20 miles up into the upmer atmosphere. Sorry, atmosphere. Then he would separate from the balloon and ignite the fuse of a hydrogen peroxide rocket that would launch him up the rest of the way, about 40 miles or so. He'd have an oxygen tank to last him about four hours round trip. Here Mike is explaining how it works. The balloon will, will have a, a structure that will be holding the capsule with me in it, and it will start, the, the balloon will start lifting up, probably maybe with a crane, and once it starts going, then it will just pick me up from there, that point, and it will just start lifting up. And once it gets to a point where it's called equalization, where it will no longer rise, it will start flying sideways, that is when I hit the, the green button to go. We think it's going to take three hours or a little less, but well enough for four hours. Round trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll come down and I think, yeah, I think they said 30 minutes maybe. It'll take uh, two hours for the balloon, maybe a 22 minute ride for the other 40 something miles, 1.8 Gs, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to come down 2,000 miles an hour for a while. Yeah. It and won't then, feel like it because it's, you know, but yeah, it's going to, now there's some, now this is the thing is, some people think that Rockets cannot propel over 50 miles. It stops. There's nothing to push off from. So mm -hmm. I'm going to prove, you know, and some people, it's just, you know, it's a lot to get your arms around. You think, well, we've been to space and moon. Well, maybe we haven't. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't believe we went to the moon. And that's tough for a lot of people. Right. Because there's so much of our belief system is based on that. But when that thing launches out in the garage, I'd mm -hmm. be the most watched you've been in mankind well, history. Sure. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Yeah. Have your lives out change. Watching him at the Adventurers Club, I thought, I've got to interview this guy. I started writing a long form article about him, which ultimately ended up at 30,000 words. I reached out to him and he invited me to his home all the way out in Apple Valley, California, a small desert town with unpaved dirt roads about 90 or so miles northeast of LA. In April 2019, my wife and I drove out there to El Ranchito Raquette or the Rocket Ranch, as the five-acre property is called. He rented it for $323 a month from a guy named Waldo Stakes, who helped him build the steam-powered rockets, the Raccoon, which Waldo originally named Hemingway, a speedboat that Mike hoped would break the wor world water speed record, and other death-defying vehicles. Mike was working on his steam-powered rocket when we arrived. The cockpit of the Raccoon, made from the wingtip tank of a Cold War era Lockheed F-94 Starfighter was lying on the floor of his garage. Mad Mike looked the part with his boyish but well-worn face and his silver wild hairdo befitting a mad scientist. Mad Mike hailed from Oklahoma City where he was born in 1956. His dad worked in a body shop and raced cars on the weekends. His family traveled around the country to watch his dad race in county fairs. At a young age, Mad Mike became enthralled with daredevils such as Evil Knievel and Kenny Powers. As a kid, he watched George Rice Chitwood perform automobile stunts in the Joy Chitwood Thrill Show at the racetrack, an exhibition that toured the country for 40 years. Mad Mike lived everywhere from Washington to Florida and on and off in California since 1983. He started racing motorcycles at age 12 and turned pro in the AMA Pro Flat Track a professional racing circuit featuring quarter mile and half mile flat tracks. He also became the top speedway mo motorcycle ice racer in the United States in 1979. Mad Mike started working the pit crew in NASCAR in 1986 and eventually became a crew chief and fabricator. He became a limo driver in November 1996, first in Las Vegas and later in the Mojave Desert. He was a chauffeur for the Showcase Limousine Service in Riverside, California. He made $15 an hour driving people around the desert until he was recently laid off. He jumped limousines in Paris, California, Seattle, Washington, and Las Vegas and Paw Rump, Nevada. He was inspired to start jumping limousines and become a daredevil when he came home at six in the morning after a night of driving a limo and passed out on the couch with his tuxedo still on. Teletubbies was playing on the TV. And as he slept, he dreamt that he was jumping a limo into the belly of one of the Teletubbies. He woke up wondering how he could become king of the daredevils as he then branded himself. 
His first step toward earning that title was to recreate Evil Knievel's failed attempt to jump the quarter mile wide Snake River Canyon in Southern Idaho, which Mad Mike called the holy grail of stunts in his new book, on a rocket propelled motorcycle called the X2 Sky Cycle, hence the name of Mad Mike's rocket, the X2 Sky Limo, on September 8, 1974. He couldn't get the approval he needed from the local government in Idaho, so he decided to move on to rocket launches in California. Before we sat down to interview Mike at his house in Apple Valley, he told us unprompted why he lives out in the boonies. The only reason I'm here is because it's the most cheapest place I can live. Mm. It's as cheap as I can live. Any cheaper place have a little shot. Is it inconvenient? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the entertainment capital of the world here. <laughs> and it's got the small town mentality. Right. The radio station here has never interviewed me. Oh yeah. None of them. They've got huh. like four radio stations and one one building here never even called me. Wow. Really? I yeah, mean, you World think they news. would. Well, yeah. I've been on the front page of the newspaper five times. Uh, not really. Uh, I've been on the front page of the newspaper five times. Yeah. i got a TV show down here. Not even call me. How do you not do that? <laughs> yeah, really. See what I mean? It's just bizarre. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is what it is. This is a theme he returned to regularly in our hours-long conversation, that he wasn't getting the recognition that he so clearly deserved. His living room was a shrine to all of his exploits, Newspaper clippings, magazine covers, pieces of aircraft, his books, his Guinness World Records plaque, the remains of his ripped up parachute, photos, the armband he wore in the green room during the taping of Jimmy Kimmel Live when he was a guest, memorabilia from his NASCAR motorcycle racing days, a Mad Mike Hughes coloring book, and so on. He relished pointing out the highlights of his life to us. Now, this is my toys coming out. This is a prototype. This is probably the biggest toy in the world. Because he's <laughs> yes. going to ride with me in this launch. Cool. So that's, uh, that's Stunt Bunny. So he's going to take the ride with me here in about a month. He had four cats, which he was quick to point out made him a crazy cat person. Though not as crazy as if he had six, like he used to have. During the majority of our conversation, Mike rambled on and on about the various conspiracy theories he believed in. He said he lost track of when he started believing the Earth is flat, but it was sometime around late spring, early summer 2016. So after his crash landing in Winkleman, Arizona, his first rocket launch in 2014, for what that's worth. The flat earth movement has exploded in the last few years in the age of YouTube. In early June, 2017, the Infinite Plain Society put up a billboard outside Philadelphia International Airport that read, Research Flat Earth. Mad Mike saw a video of it on YouTube and got the idea to put Research Flat Earth on his rocket a veritable steam-powered billboard for the Flat Earth Movement, as he put it in his book. It's hard to know for sure what he truly believed and what he thought would garner attention. He said he was an adherent of the geocentric Flat Earth model, meaning he believed we live on a flat, stationary, disc-shaped Earth at the center of the universe, surrounded by a giant wall of ice called Antarctica, and possibly more rings of land beyond that, and shielded by an arch firmament above us like a snow globe. His PR rep, Darren Shuster, told me after Mike died that the flat earth angle was just a publicity stunt meant to garner more sponsors and attention. I was his publicist for 17 years, Shuster told me. The flat earth campaign was a PR stunt to get global attention to attract sponsors and it always worked. We dreamt it up to then have more adventure. That was just our business model. He was not a flat earther and I feel like I want people to know he was a real stunt man and he was a genius PR man as well to the very end. Just tired of hearing about him as a flat earther now that he is no longer with us. He would want me to share his best stunt, building a rocket to prove the earth was flat. Waldo Stakes disagreed with that assessment in a post he wrote on Facebook. Mike was a real flat earther, he wrote. He had dozens of books on the subject. Darren Shuster had nothing to do with Mike's flat earth decision and wasn't even around when Mike was trying to convince me of the theory. I'm sure you heard that, that his PR guy thought Mike wasn't a real flat earther. Okay. You, you, you think he really was. Let me cl clarify this, mm -hmm. okay? First thing is Mike was a flat earther with cheese, man. He believed that. He has, had a half, I got him in his files, a half dozen books on that. Mm -hmm. He believed that, okay? And the reason why he believed that, he's a, he had a rebel mindset. He was just like, I'm not believing this just because the government says. Like right now, this COVID virus thing, he wouldn't have a mask on. Yeah. He'd be going, oh, these guys are full of shit. They're just making this up. Indeed, here he is at the Adventurers Club on January 30th, 2020, just three weeks before he died and just a few weeks before the coronavirus pandemic caused states to lock down. And plus, it's fake virus. This is another security thing, this virus thing. 
because now they want to get the global vaccine, okay? Here he is talking about a possible way to prove whether the Earth is flat by sailing around Australia. But then he concludes that the only way to prove it is by launching himself up to the edge of space. Suppose if you sail around Australia, mm -hmm. as a flat Earth map is real, it would take you 60,000 miles about to get the coast of Australia, if, it, if that is what is circles around the flat Earth, it's mm -hmm. just a nice wall, okay? Mm -hmm. and normally, and if, you go, if, it, if it's a globe, it's 14,000 miles around. Mm -hmm. And that may be a way to prove it. But I think going up is on the way. Mm -hmm. We got a worldwide audience watching what I'm watching. Right. And then you have a tipping point. That's what I want. I want the tipping point. Mm -hmm. I want to be the guy that, that pushes his pen on the other way. And people realize now everything's a lie. Not surprisingly, many in the flat earth community were not happy that Mike was attempting to go into space and confirm the shape of the earth. Because if he went up and inevitably proved that the world is a sphere, that would end the gravy train for a lot of flat earthers out there who make money from merchandise, websites, advertising, shows, books, conferences, and the like. I think they're jealous. Mm -hmm. I think it's envy. And then I will end their little party. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Once I go up there and once sees what I see, we're going to have an answer. Yeah. Right. Now, all these guys that will... Uh, but it doesn't necessarily end it because if, if they're right, it just helps them. Right. What? Well, you would think that. Right. Yeah. You would think that. Right. But if, if they have to share the spotlight, they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. He told me that he was sick of the political infighting in the Flat Earth community. This is what I do not like about Flat Earth. It divides people even further. He wasn't invited to the Flat Earth International Conference at the Crown Plaza, an airport hotel and convention center in Denver, Colorado, in November 2018. But he showed up anyway and brought his rocket along for good measure. I bullied my way into that. Oh, yeah. We started saying that, hey, I'm going to be there. I'm going to bring the rocket. I'm going to sit in front of that hotel, mm -hmm. the Crown Plaza in Denver. I'm going to be there. And, of course, the word got out. And they said they finally about a week or two before, hey, Michael, how you doing? Well, yeah. <laughs> How come no one's calling me? Yeah. You know? No one's done more for Flat Earth than I have. Mm -hmm. You know? The amount of media I got was tens of millions of yeah. dollars worth. Yeah. I was on the front page of the China Communist newspaper. Yeah. You know? They, mm -hmm. they flew me to Norway. Mm -hmm. You know? BBC is one of the biggest stories. You know? Yeah. That was the biggest story on AP, Yahoo, Google, the second biggest story on Facebook twice mm -hmm. worldwide. And you're not inviting me to a Flat Earth conference? Right. So you see what I mean? And Simpson, Simpson, you know, it's like I can tell people. Never, yeah, there's a dead mouse underneath the refrigerator. Smoked. There's a dead mouse underneath the refrigerator. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. Eventually, they let him put his rocket in the center of the hotel's vendor room, prime real estate. At that conference, the organizer, Robbie Davidson, surprised the crowd by introducing YouTube personality, Logan Paul, who came on stage and announced he was coming out of the flat earth closet as part of a documentary he was filming about the Flat Earth Movement. Paul's YouTube channel has more than 18 million subscribers. He received harsh backlash in January 2018 when he filmed himself and his friends making fun of a dead body in Japan's Aoki Gahara Forest, where many people commit suicide. Turns out, Paul's documentary about the Flat Earth Movement was really a mockumentary called The Flat Earth to the Edge and Back, and he was not, in fact, coming out of the Flat Earth Closet. This did not sit well with Mad Mike, who Paul interviewed briefly for the film. Mad Mike filed a lawsuit against Paul and Paul's associate, Michael Majlak, in San Bernardino court, charging fraud. His one-page claim against Paul and Majlak, filed on April 11th, 2019, reads, Claim, Michael J. Hughes, a man, aggrieved, wrong claims by this court of record, Logan Paul used my image twice in a recent movie. My, slash mockumentary that centered around and at the Flat Earth International Conference November 15th through 16th, 2018, located in Denver, Colorado. Logan Paul knowingly and willingly used fraud and deception while speaking and filming at the conference. Michael and or Mike Majlik was also a co-conspirator with the above described fraud and deception. Both wrongdoers utilized my property without a signed full disclosure release. Orders, compensation of unauthorized use of private property, $500,000. Fraud and deception, three years in custody of the state of California prison. Half a million dollars and three years in prison for making a mockumentary. And actually only for 15 seconds of said mockumentary, because that's how long Mad Mike appeared on screen. Paul asks him why he launched himself in a rocket, and Mad Mike replies, just to prove it could be done. 
Paul says, you're a maverick. That's essentially the extent of the exchange. Since Mad Mike wasn't invited to the Flat Earth International Conference, he decided to organize and host his own Flat Earth Conference, which was held at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas on May 25th and 26, 2019. The main podium at the conference featured Fepe the Penguin, the Flat Earth Pepe version of Pepe the Frog, the cartoon frog with a shit-eating grin that has become the mascot of the alt-right. The Flat Earth community is a thick, chunky political gumbo, unifying people on the far left, far right, 9-11 truthers, anti-vaxxers, chemtrailers, and other tinfoil hatters whose beliefs don't belong anywhere on the traditional political spectrum. Mike himself believed in a lot of other conspiracy theories and other weird ideas. Here's what he said when I said an average person couldn't blast off in rockets like he did. It does seem like an average person wouldn't be able to pull off that kind of... Yeah, I'm not an average person. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a person because a person's a corporation. A person also is short for the Latin term persona, and the original definition of persona is mask. I'm not wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Oh, I turn him up. I turn him upside down in court. I cannot talk any cop about the law, any mm -hmm. bailiff. And here he is expounding on the English language. English is a bastardized language. It's, it, there's no description in the English language. And in English, uh, the alphabet didn't even have the letter J in it, I think 220 years ago, 240 years ago. Okay? So how did you say Jesus? Do you, you see right. what I mean? Yeah. There's no J. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, all that J is what he, what he says, I think it was originally an A or an O. Yeah. Like Job or something in the Bible, it was actually an A or, a or an O. Yeah. Or I or no, excuse me, instead of a J. Mm -hmm. So you go, wow. Yeah. You know, but realizing everything is for control. Mm -hmm. Social so, control. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is weird because the people's got the money, they got all the money. Mm -hmm. All the Rockefellers and Rothschilds and Central Bank, they got all the money. They can print it. Yeah. So you think, God, what's. But if it's. They want everybody chipped. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. That's they want everybody chipped. And all the, all the money goes to the chip, either there or there. And then if you don't pay your traffic ticket, they take it off your chip. Right. Or if you start talking about it, bad about the government, they just turn your chip off. You can't buy or sell. You can't get gas in your car. Oh, you mean they want to chip? You think chip. they want to chip people? Everybody, oh yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what they want. And here's his claim that George W. Bush had a boyfriend in college. You know, I tell people, I said, you know George W. Bush had a boyfriend in, in uh, school in Yale? They go, what? One of my best friends in commerce supported him. Hmm. Oh, yeah, his name was Victor Ash. What do you mean he had a boyfriend? Well, they dated. Hmm. Really? Yeah. They looked him up. So said, wow, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. George, uh, Victor Ash. Hmm. Yep, Victor Ash. So, uh, it comes George W. Bush was a Yale cheerleader. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. it goes on and on. I looked this up, and the blog that made these claims at the bottom said, this particular blog is intended as humor and satire. Any perceptions one may develop or conclusions one may reach based on their own use of logic or intuition is not the responsibility of the author. Here's Mike's theory about O.J. Simpson. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah I guess you know, the day he got out was the day of the Las Vegas shooting. Oh, was it? And really? the guy that was, sh was shooting, they said was shooting on 30 seconds. Remember, O.J. got out the same day and his football number was 32. The guy in the was shooting from to the 32nd floor on the same day O.J. got out of oh. prison. Is that wild? I mean, yeah. 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 He seemed to be implying that there was a direct correlation here between O.J. and the Mandalay Bay shooter, not simply pointing out that the numbers were a coincidence. His proof of the link leaves a little to be desired, however. Here are his theories on Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. And that some of the people we're fighting now it's because they don't have a central bank system. That's what they don't tell you about the media. Iran don't have a central bank, North Korea don't, and Saddam Hussein didn't have one in Iraq. He was going to start his own currency also. That's another reason they went after him. He used to be, he was a CIA person. Saddam Hussein was CIA. Now you know about Tim Osman. That was a code name for Osama bin Laden. He was a CIA agent. You didn't know that, did you? Uh, no. Yeah, I'm see not really that. familiar with all that. Oh yeah, see. That's the stuff they don't discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. CIA agent, mm -hmm. Tim Osman went to every military base, I think, in this country. There's pictures of him in this country with doctors wearing an orange shirt, he's clean shaven. Mm -hmm. The guy's on dialysis, okay? So where, how, can't even, how's, where's he traveling around with that? Mm -hmm. Some people think he died in 2001. Mm 
yeah. a woman who ran for a, who was, had an attempt to kill her, said on TV in 2007 that he died like 2002 or something. Yeah. That's the where he died. It's a bizarre guy. Yeah. It's bizarre. Just everything is a lie. And that's why people can't believe. Here's his theory on satellites at the Adventurers Club. Basically, I believe the satellites are not satellites. They are photo imaging equipment. So when they do the fake alien invasion, which is what they're going to do, that's the final card with the Illuminati and all these elites. Basically, they will have photo imaging equipment, and that's what was going to do the hologram from the sky with the fake alien invasion. That's my theory. Whatever that's worth. I know what's out there, but uh, you know, so am I. <laughs> Here he is talking about his run for governor of California in 2018. I actually uh, registered during the lawful period mm -hmm. uh, in San Bernardino. I sent the letter to Alex Padilla in Sacramento saying I'm the only lawful candidate for governor. No one else I recognize. And I'm running for the lawful government of 1849, not the fictitious de facto government of 1878, which is corporate. Mm -hmm. Corporation cannot be a government. They're going to be de facto. Mm -hmm. And when the de jure stands up, the de facto has to sit down. De jure means lawful. Mm -hmm. And this state has not been lawful since 1878. And so what happened when you... No, they just that? ignored me. Oh. They just ignored me. What else are you going to do? So, all right, Michael, you're right. We give up. You win. You're not going to do that. Whether or not his flat eartherism was real, he did act on other conspiracy beliefs. For example, Mad Mike was a fervent proponent of the obscure conspiracy theory that a person's name, when spelled in all upper capitalization, such as on a birth certificate or a passport, is not actually their name, but rather a corporate entity that can be purchased and owned by someone else. So he purchased the entities of a number of famous people, such as Barack Obama, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Phil Spector, Warren Buffett, Paul McCartney, and many others, including judges and traffic cops who issued him speeding tickets. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for new episodes of Well Read every week or two. You can find this show on YouTube and PasadenaMedia.org. I'm Justin Chapman signing off. Learn more about my work at JustinDouglasChapman.com. And remember, a life well read is a life well spent. So go read a book. Till next time.